This video will show you how to define an HY12 model using the Watershed Modeling System, or WMS, interface. The objectives of this video are first to provide an introduction to HY12 and to WMS, and show how to learn more about HY12. Second, I want to describe and demonstrate how to define, run, and view the output from an HY12 model using the WMS interface. And finally, I want to help you understand the input parameters required to define an HY12 model. FHWA's HY12 is a DOS-based storm drain analysis program that can be used for designing inlets, pipes, and the general layout of a storm drain network. The following structures are supported and can be defined in an HY12 model. For nodes, you can define access holes, inlets, junctions, minor losses, outfalls, pump stations, rational method computations, reservoirs, and pipe transitions. For links, you can define open channels, gutters, pipes, and pipe storage structures. The Watershed Modeling System, or WMS, is a GIS-based tool that helps you create plan view digital representations of hydrologic and hydraulic models, compute the geometric and hydrologic input parameters for these models, and then run these models. The models are defined by drawing points, lines, or polylines, and polygons that represent various aspects of the model. For HY12, points can represent access holes or inlets, and lines can represent open channels or pipes. The points and lines are converted to a model schematic that includes links and nodes where the various access hole, inlet, and pipe structures in the model are defined. WMS supports several hydrologic and hydraulic models and HY12 is one of the storm drain models supported. WMS includes a simplified interface to HY12 where all of the most common structures such as pipes, access holes, and inlets can be defined using a simple spreadsheet and an advanced interface where any HY12 structure can be defined. I will demonstrate using the simplified interface in this video. Several HY12 tutorials can be downloaded from the WMS Learning Center at aquaveo.com. When you go to aquaveo.com, click on the Watershed Modeling System on the main page. Then click on the Learning Center on the bar at the top of the next page. Then select WMS Tutorials. Then select the Additional tab. There are several HY12 tutorials and their associated data files under the storm drain slash sanitary sewer modeling section. If you don't have a license to WMS, you can still run the HY12 interface using the WMS Community Edition. The WMS Community Edition is a free version of WMS available to everyone that contains a complete unlimited interface to HY12 and that allows you to model as many pipes and junctions or links and nodes as your project requires. The WMS Community Edition is, a, is the full version of WMS with some of the functionality disabled. This functionality can be enabled by requesting or purchasing a license to WMS. Employees of state DOTs and FHWA employees are entitled to a WMS license free of charge. Select the option to enable WMS in the startup screens and then request an FHWA evaluation license if you are a DOT or FHWA employee. After doing this, you will be sent a code that allows you to register WMS using a password. For more information on licensing WMS for state DOT or FHWA employees, visit the aquaveo.com website select Support, and then click on the link for government users. For everybody else, you'll need to buy a license to WMS. 
or you can use the Community Edition. For those using the Community Edition, the WMS Community Edition allows for any WMS supported model with the following limitations. The maximum number of watershed subbasins is limited to one. The number of GIS layers is limited to two. The number of map module coverages and attribute grids is limited to three. The number of terrain data layers is limited to one. And the number of storm drain pipes is limited to 50. But in HY12, the number of pipes is unlimited. In addition, 2D scatter data, CAD data, 2D grid data, and 1D open channel hydraulic data are not allowed in the community edition. If you, if you have exceeded the limits of the community edition, you can still view the model, but the options to save, export, edit, and run external models are disabled. This video will demonstrate some of the capabilities of the HY12 interface using the community edition. If you are using a paid version, various features are available in the different paid versions. Visit aquaveo.com to learn about the different features and the process pricing for the paid versions of WMS. There are several steps required to define, run, and visualize the output of an HY12 model using the WMS interface. First, you should define your, your model layout. This includes defining inlet and access hole locations, pipe locations, and other storm drain layout information necessary to define your HY12 model. Second, you should define your project settings. Project settings are parameters that are used everywhere in your HY12 model. Third, define node information. This could include inlet and access hole information, rational method parameters, and outfall parameters. Fourth, define link data, which includes the geometry and associated information for each pipe or channel. Fifth, run HY12. Sixth, view the results from running HY12, including the hydraulic grade line, detailed text file output, and the elevations in the storm drain network. The first step in defining your HY12 model layout is to create a storm drain coverage. A storm drain coverage is a plan view of the pipes, access holes, and junctions in a storm drain network, and a background map or a CAD file can be used to define this coverage. In the WMS interface, pipes are defined as polylines or arcs, and access holes and inlets are defined as points or nodes. You create a storm drain coverage by starting WMS, then right-clicking on your existing drainage coverage and changing the type to storm drain. You can also create a new coverage that has a storm drain type. After creating your storm drain coverage, it's usually a good idea to get a background reference map and possibly read or use online web services to get ground elevation data for your storm drain model area. You should also set your coordinate system to make sure you're working in the projection that you want to be working in. After reading a background map, create arcs that represent a plan view of your storm drain pipe network and convert your plan network to a schematic of links and nodes. The links and nodes contain information about the structures in your network, such as pipes, access holes, inlets, rational computations, and outfalls. I'll now demonstrate how to define a plan view of the model layout in WMS and how to convert this layout to a storm drain schematic. I'll analyze a simple storm drain network with a few pipes and access hole structures. So we'll start by starting up WMS. When I start WMS, since I'm running the community edition, it brings this, win this window up. It tells me WMS is not enabled. I can either choose to register WMS, get a, a paid license or request a license code to WMS, or I can choose to not register. If I don't register, then I'll be running the community edition of WMS. When WMS starts, you'll notice a few things. This set of buttons up here, this is called the module, the WMS modules. The modules we're going to be working in mainly are the map module and the hydraulic modeling module of WMS. 
the map module is where I define my my lines that represent my storm drain network, and then the hydraulic modeling module is where I define my model data. I'll also be working with this toolbar. This is the Get Data toolbar, and there are various options for getting data in this toolbar. Here on the left, I have my Project Explorer. This is all the data I currently have in WMS. It comes up with some existing data. Just to the right of that Project Explorer bar are some tools that allow me to change my view, to rotate my view, pan my view, zoom, or to some tools also that allow me to select and create things in my graphics window. This main window here is my graphics window. Up here at the top are my menus. And my menus change based on which module I have selected. So we're going to start out by right-clicking on this drainage coverage and changing the type to a storm drain coverage. I could also right-click on the coverages, create a new coverage, and set that to be a storm drain coverage. But I'm going to just change the existing drainage coverage to a storm drain coverage to begin with. Then what I need to do is get an aerial photograph and some elevation data for the area that I'm interested in modeling. To do that, I'm going to select this button here in the Get Data toolbar, Get Data from Map. What this does is it goes on the internet, and I can choose a location that I'm interested in. I'm going to type in my address here that I'm interested in modeling. And I'm going to zoom in then on the area that I'm interested in modeling, this area right here. And then when I hit OK, I'll bring up, WMS will bring up another window that will give me a list of data that I can download for this area that I've selected. And it'll download data for this rectangle, this box, um, this area that I've selected here. Hit OK. And this window comes up. This has the different data that are available for download. One data set is world imagery data. Another data set is elevation data. I'm going to download both imagery, which is just uh, aerial photograph, and elevation data for this area that I've selected. We'll define a file name. WMS tells me it's going to create these files. Hit yes to create those files. And it'll prompt me for some resolutions. I'm going to just select the default resolutions because WMS tries to select a good resolution for the data that I'm downloading. So it first downloads the elevation data, which is displayed by these contours. And I'm going to turn those contours off. And it also displays and downloads an aerial photograph of the area that I'm interested in modeling. What I need to do is create my storm drain network. But before I do that, I'm going to make sure I am in the correct projection or coordinate system that I want to work in. So to do that, I'm going to go to Edit and select Reproject. I'm going to reproject all my data. The default, there is a default projection, and the default projection is UTM. I'm going to change that so I'm working in state plane coordinates. I'll change it to use the state plane coordinate system, Utah Central, U.S. Survey feet. For those are my X, Y units, and my Z units, I'll use U.S. Survey Feet. When I do this, it'll convert my existing data over to those units. I also need to convert my elevation data from meters to feet. So now I'm ready to create my storm drain network. To create my storm drain network, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this tool here. This is the Create Feature Arc tool. I'll select that tool, then I can use the middle mouse scroll wheel to click and pan and then zoom in. I can scroll that wheel to zoom in to the area that I'm interested in starting where I want to start my model. And then I left click to begin a pipe or arc. And then 
double click to end that arc. So that's my first pipe that I've created. I've started from the upstream end and I've gone downstream. So you, whenever you create a pipe, you want to go from upstream to downstream. Then I can click again where I've ended that pipe and I'll use the middle, hold down the middle mouse scroll wheel to pan and then double click at the next inlet location create that pipe and then I'll create a final pipe by starting at where I left where I ended that pipe at that inlet and then go to the next inlet which is located right here and double click to end and frame my view then you can see this line right here this is my pipe network after I've created my pipe network I can go ahead and convert that to a HY12 schematic. So to do that, I select the storm drain menu, and then there's this map to 1D schematic menu command. Select that command, and I want to create an HY12 model. I'll select HY12 for my model. Hit OK, and then now you can see that I have these red squares that represent my node locations or my access hole or inlet locations and these green triangles represent my pipe locations, my pipes or links. So access holes and inlets and rational method computations are defined at nodes in WMS and pipes, channels, things like that are defined at links in WMS. We're going to go back to the lecture and define, now I'm going to describe how to define the project settings in an HY12 model. So we're going to talk a little bit about project settings. To access the project settings, you select the Edit Project Parameters command from the HY12 menu in the Storm Drain or Hydraulic Modeling module. In the HY12 Properties window, you first enter general project information that applies to your entire project. First, you'll enter information about the project in the project name, notes, and designer fields. Next, you choose your unit system, metric or English. Next, select the material database used with this project. The material database file contains settings for the project that you personalize and then occasionally update as needed. I'll demonstrate some of the settings in the material database file as I show how to enter the project settings in the WMS interface later in this video. On the first line of the material database settings, you can edit the path, select the file, or view the currently selected file. The second line informs you whether the selected file name exists and whether the file can be read. The next field increases the number of digits of precision in the report. Leave this at zero unless there is a specific need. The next option specifies how much information to report in the HY12 log file. There are several options. Report no errors, report errors, report errors and warnings, report errors, warnings, and notices, report errors, warnings, notices, and the full log. An error is a problem serious enough to stop the model from running. A warning is a problem that should be fixed, but the model continues to compute and complete the run. A notice is information from the model that does not in indicate an error or warning in the model. The full log will include every step in the run of the model and is likely to include more information than needed. The next option specifies how the user enters geometry. It is recommended that you keep the default option, specify length, angle, and elevations, and compute the slope. The user can choose whether HY12 will analyze or design the drainage system. The three options are analyze. HY12 will not make any changes to the storm to the pipe network. Design, size pipes only. HY12 will increase or decrease the size of the pipes. Design, size pipes, optimize elevations. HY12 will increase or decrease the size of the pipes, but also increase or decrease the invert elevations of the pipes and access holes. 
HY12 will trigger a warning whenever the drop or difference from an upstream pipe to a downstream pipe is greater than the drop allowed in an access hole. This value tells HY12 how to determine drop in an access hole. Matching crown will compare the top or crown elevations inside of the pipes. Matching inverts will compare the bottom or invert elevations inside of the pipes. HY12 can be run in steady flow or unsteady or hydrographic flow. If you select unsteady flow, there are more options available. Enter a time step that HY12 will use for hydrograph computations and for reports. You can also select the hydrograph method that will be used in the rational method computations to create the model hydrographs. HY12 is designed for projects small enough that only one, only one intensity, duration, frequency, or IDF curve is sufficient to accurately cover the model. Rather than specifying the, name, the same IDF several times, the user can turn on one IDF for the project, then define it in one location. There are three methods you can use to define an IDF curve. Select the appropriate method for your area and define the parameters. HY12 will be able to compute an intensity at any time of concentration. When defining a global IDF, you do not need to specify a time of specify or compute a time of concentration, TC, or compute an intensity. Once the IDF data has been entered, the user needs to select the recurrence interval for the design of the storm sewer drainage system. The equation used to determine the selected curve is given for reference. The computed curves are plotted for reference. To enter user-supplied data into the IDF calculator, first select the design recurrence interval. Enter the intensities at the requested durations. These intensities can be obtained from NOAA Atlas 14 for many parts of the, of the United States. Enter the intensities for all desired recurrence intervals. The next two options, ignore gutter inlets and assume gutter inlets capture all flow are related. The following options or scenarios can exist. If neither option is turned on, HY12 runs normally and inflows enter inlets based on each inlet's efficiency. Selecting the ignore gutter inlets option means no inlet structures need to be defined and the program will compute pipe sizes based on inflows manually input or computed using the rational method at access holes. 100% of the flow is captured with this option selected. Selecting the Assume Gutter Inlets Capture All Flow option means pipes will be designed assuming 100% capture of input, input flows as above, but inlet structures will be defined and capture computations will be performed and summarized. The computed inlet capture efficiency will not be used to size or determine the flow into the pipes if this option is selection, selected. It is recommended to turn this option on when designing a storm drain network to have the pipe network capable of full flow at each inlet in case gutter inlets are later replaced with a more efficient design. Note that for any of these options, you can specify a flow value at each inlet or access hole after running offline computations. HY12 has many options and settings that are available, but that are not used for most models. Two interfaces were created for HY12 to keep the interface simple and clean. They give the user ability to control and have the full power of HY12. The advanced interface is required to set up pump stations, junctions, minor losses, reservoirs, transitions, pipe storage, or pipe bends. There are also additional inputs available through the various dialogues in the advanced interface. I will now demonstrate how to define the project parameters in the WMS database, the WMS interface. So we'll go back to the WMS window. And if you remember, we finished by creating this schematic. To access the data in the schematic, I'll go to the hydraulic modeling module and then when I'm in the hydraulic modeling module, I have this HY12 menu. I'll select the HY12 menu and select Edit Project Parameters. So here are my parameters. 
we're going to define first by start by defining a project name. We'll define some project notes. Enter the designer's name. Select English units for my unit system, then we'll define a material database. When you install WMS, it also installs HY12. And HY12 is installed just like any other program, and it puts files in your program files direct directory. One of the files that's included in the installation is the material database file. So there's material db.txt. There's also a metric version of the file that you can use. We're going to use the English version, which is just material db.txt. I can view that file. Now, if I view that file, you'll be able to actually view, and you can actually edit that file if you wish. Let's go ahead and look through some of the options in this file. So it starts by defining the unit system. There's some options for default material, default minor loss, default shape. We'll leave those options. There's also options for your report file that's generated when you run HY12. These are the different options for that. You can change these values to no if you do not want those sections in your report. Then you have different report options. So you can, these are the different options. Uh, if I want some of these turned on, I can go ahead and change these to yes, or I can leave the defaults, which is usually you want the defaults, or you can edit those defaults to change them to yes. As I continue down on, in, on into the file, I also have data that defines my HY12 materials. These materials are different pipe types that can be used, and if you have your own pipe types for your own area, you can add these. But these pipe types are just taken from a, an FHWA database of materials. And these include the managed roughness values and then the names of the different pipe types. And I also have different channel lining information that I can, I can use if I have a channel in my HY12 model. I also have minor losses that are defined here from my FHWA data. These are just default minor loss information. And then I have contract, contraction and expansion losses. I can edit that table if I wish, add contraction and expansion losses if I wish, but I'm going to leave that. And then I have different pipe sizes and shapes that are available. And in my case, I'm not going to edit any of this information. If I want to, I can change the pipe types, pipe sizes, pipe materials, minor laws. I can change any of this stuff in this file and then save this file and use a saved file. But I'm going to leave this file as is, and we're just going to use the default settings. I'm going to leave these at my defaults, extra precision, error reporting, calculate geometry, and leave those at default settings. We want to analyze a storm drain network. I'm going to allow a drop of 0.1 feet. in my access hole. Leave all these others as a default. We're going to run a steady flow simulation as opposed to an unsteady flow simulation. We're going to use one IDF curve for the entire project. We're going to ignore gutter inlet. That means that any, I don't need to, that's, this means basically that I don't need to find my inlet information and that any flow that hits those inlets, um, which I don't have inlets, but it's, if it hits an access hole, then it's going to flow into that access hole. So any 100% of the flow is going to flow into my access holes in my model. That's what that option means. I'm also going to assume the gutter inlets will capture all flow, but this option actually assumes that. So um, you don't necessarily need to check this, but I'm going to check that option also. 
I'm going to define my project IDF. Now, to define my IDF, I need to first select a recurrence interval. I'm going to define my 10-year storm. So I'm going to assume a 10-year storm happens here and size my pipes for a 10-year recurrence interval. So I'll select this button to define my storm data. My recurrence interval is 10 years. And then I'll go to NOAA Atlas 14. And this is, when you go to NOAA Atlas 14, you just go to Google, search for NOAA Atlas 14. They'll come up with a website that allows you to get your storm intensity to different recurrence intervals for a lot of places in the United States. It's not, it doesn't fully cover the United States, but it covers m most of the United States right now. And once you've selected your area, you're gonna come up with this window here at the bottom of the screen, select your area, um, select that you want to define your precipitation, want your data type to be the precipitation intensity as opposed to precipitation depth. And then down here, it's going to show your precipitation intensity at different recurrence intervals. So, for example, at the 10 year storm recurrence interval, these are my storm durations. For a five minute duration, my intensity is 3.43 inches per hour. So these are my units, inches per hour, which is a pretty high intensity for the five minute uh, storm duration. And then the intensity usually goes down the longer storm goes. So the rational method wants these intensities. So I'm going to go back to WMS and define these 10-year recurrence interval intensities. So the five-minute intensity is 3.43 inches per hour. The 10-minute I have 2.61. The 15-minute is 2.16. 30-minute is 1.45. And the 60 minute is 0.72 or 0.899. And then WMS displays this IDF curve for that particular recurrence interval. I'm going to select the 10 year recurrence interval. That's the recurrence interval I want to model. I'll hit done here. We go back to WMS. And that defines the IDF for my entire project. If I want to run the advanced interface, I can click on this option. But in my case, I'm not running the advanced interface. I want to run the simplified interface, which actually makes it easier to set up for an initial HY12 model setup. You probably want to run just a simplified interface. Hit OK here. And then I can continue defining my model. I'll now de de describe how to define the node and link data in an HY12 model. In an HY12 model interface in WMS, each node and link has one or more structures and data that can be assigned to it. The data is assigned by double-clicking on the node or link or selecting the Edit Parameters command from the HY12 menu. At the top of the HY12 properties window, you can select whether to display nodes or links and whether to show all the nodes slash links or just the selected ones. There's also an option to sort no links or nodes based on attributes such as name or surface elevation. When nodes are selected for the attribute type, the following columns are shown. The name is the node name in the WMS graphical user interface. The link immediately upstream. The surface elevation, whether a rational method computation is defined at the node. The rational method computation parameters are defined by clicking on the rational method button. You can insert flow anywhere in your HY12 model by entering an inflow at the appropriate location in this window. You can also define whether gutter, gutter inlet is defined at the node, the gutter inlet elevation, whether to assume full capture at each individual inlet, the curb inlet height, 
the curve and gutter geometry and computation parameters defined by clicking on the Inlet Properties button. You can also define whether an access hole is defined at the node, the access hole invert elevation, the shape of the access hole, the access hole diameter or width if it's a rectangular access hole, the access hole length if rectangular, the access hole bench type, whether it's flat, depressed, half, full, or improved, whether the access hole lids are locked and sealed. If the lid is locked and sealed, the hydraulic grade line, or HGL, can rise above the surface elevation. In this case, water does not escape from the access hole and pressure builds up if the water level exceeds the ground elevation. If it's not sealed, the HGL will stop at the surface elevation. Water can exit the access hole. If you have an inlet attached to an access hole, your access hole cannot be sealed. And then you also need to define whether an outfall is defined at the node, the outfall invert elevation. This is the starting computation point for the hydraulic grade line or HGL when, H when HY12 is run. You should also define link or pipe and channel information. Link information includes the following properties. The name, is the link name in the WMS graphical user interface. You also need to find the link structure type, the structure length, which can be computed by WMS, the upstream invert elevation of the structure, the upstream surface elevation defined in the node properties and given here for reference, the downstream invert elevation of the structure, the downstream surface elevation defined in the node properties and given here for reference, the calculated slope along the structure given here for reference, the channel properties if channel is selected as a structure type. You can also define the channel Manning's end value. If the channel is selected as a, if channel is selected as a structure type, an option to select a pipe shape from the material database. <clears throat> Selecting none will require you to specify a diameter if a pipe is selected as a structure structure type. The option to define a size will be enabled if it, the user has selected a shape from the material database. The user will then select a size from the available list from the material database. An option to define the pipe size if not selecting a shape and size. The rise of the pipe shape selected from the material database, which is given for reference. The Manning's end value of the pipe the wall thickness of the pipe. This is an optional value because HY12 will assume the thickness is equal to 1 12th of the rise if this value is set to zero. The inlet angle of the pipe. This is the compass angle from north of the pipe at the inlet. This can also be computed and assigned by WMS. There is a menu item to auto assign pipe lengths and orientations after you've defined your pipe structures. This uses length defined, lengths defined by arcs in the map module and assigns the lengths to pipes in your HY12 model. There is a useful option to display and edit HY12 structure elevations. Access this option by selecting a beginning and ending node and then selecting the HY12 edit elevations menu command. This menu has a button that allows you to offset pipe invert or crown elevations so they are located at a given distance below the surface elevations. There's also an option to assign invert elevations using a starting elevation and a constant slope. You can manually edit the invert and surface elevations in a spreadsheet format or graphically edit the elevations by dragging vertices in the profile plot. I will now show how to define link and node data for your model using the WMS interface and how WMS can be used to automate some of the computations. So to define my link and node data, I'm going to make sure I'm in the hydraulic modeling module. And here in the hydraulic modeling module is where I define my link and node information as well as my other HY12 pro project parameters. So I'm going to first start by defining all the node data that needs to be defined. So to do that, I select one of the nodes. It doesn't matter necessarily which one. I right click on the node or you can just double click on the node and select edit parameters. The HY12 properties window appears and here in the HY12 properties window we can define all of the node information. 
The node information includes things like rational method computations, inlet parameters, access hole information, and outfall parameters. So we're going to start by defining some rational method computations at three of my nodes. Node 4, Node 1, and Node 2. We're going to define rational method computations of those nodes. And then any flow that's computed from the rational method computations will be entered into those nodes at the access hole location because I defined that in the project parameters. So to define, to define the rational method, I turn this toggle box on for nodes 1, 2, and 4. 4, 1, and 2, from upstream to downstream. Then I can select the Rational Properties button. And I'm going to define a rat runoff coefficient of 0.9, an area of 2 acres, and a time concentration of 6 minutes for each of my sub-basins at these node locations. Find that information. We're going to use the IEF we've already defined in this model. Hit OK. And that defines my rational method information for each of those nodes, 4, 1, and 2. Now, if I wish, I could define inlet information by checking these boxes. But since we selected the option in the project settings to ignore the gutter inlets, we don't need to define that information. Instead, we're going to define the access hole information. And so I define access hole information by checking on the access hole, define access hole boxes for nodes 1, 2, and 4. And then I need to define an, a diameter for each of my access holes. The diameter is 3 feet, and this diameter is in feet. And I can define some of my other information, like the elevations. And if I wish to define info for my access hold, I can do that. But we're going to define the elevations a little bit later in this uh, demonstration. I'm going to assume my access holes are flat. And they're not locked and sealed, so the water can exit the access hole if that happens. And then I can turn on this option to define my outfall at node 3, which is my most downstream node of my model down here. We'll define the outfall at that location. And I'm going to define my elevations here later, so we won't define my elevations just yet. Then I'm going to go to my links. And for my links, I'm going to define all of my links as pipes. So I'll go here to the top to the all row and select pipe for all my links. And there are several parameters, the length, the upstream invert elevation, the downstream invert elevation, uh, the shape, the size, diameter, and all these parameters that need to be defined. I can, WMS will compute the lengths and we have an easy way to determine the upstream and downstream invert elevations in WMS. So I'm going to wait until later to define those parameters. But what, I'm, what I am going to define is the diameter of each of my pipes. So the diameter of the most upstream pipe, which is pipe which is link one, is going to be two feet, and the diameter of the downstream pipes, two downstream pipes, is going to be three feet each. I'm going to define a manager reference point zero one five for all of my pipes. And I can also define a wall thickness and an inlet angle, but WMS will actually compute the wall thickness as one twelfth of my pipe diameter. So I'm going to let WMS do that. If, it, if, if you don't like that value, you can go in later and edit the values that WMS computes, change the values of the wall thickness. And same with the inlet angle. We, we have an option, WMS, to compute the inlet angles, and we're going to select that option. So I've defined everything that I need to um, so far in each of these links and nodes. Hit OK. 
And then I'm going to select, I'm going to go ahead and compute my lengths and orientations of my pipes. So to do that, I go to the HY12 menu and then there's a assign lengths and orientations menu command. Select that menu command. Tells me the, the lengths and also the orientations were assigned to each of my links in my model. The next thing I want to do is assign some ground elevations. So I'll go to do that, I'll go to the HY12 menu, select assign elevations to ground. And that assigns ground elevations to all of the links and nodes that I have defined in my model. So then if I go back to my node parameters, you'll see that surface elevations are now defined for my nodes. And for my links, I have upstream and downstream surface elevations defined, and also lengths. My wall thickness is defined, and my inlet angles are also defined. So that's what I've computed using those menu commands. The next thing I need to do is to assign invert elevations to each of my pipes and access holes. So to do that, there's a nice tool in WMS that allows me to assign elevations along my pipe network. So I'll select the most, down, most upstream node in my network as well as the most downstream node in my network and select HY12, Edit Elevations. And that brings up this window. And in this window, there are several options. Um, one option I have is I can just go ahead and manually type in some invert elevations. This is a, on the top part of this window is a diagram of the pipe network. And it's kind of confusing right now because my invert elevations for my pipes and inlet and access holes are all zero. So I haven't defined those yet. But once I define those, you'll be able to see a little better what is displayed up here. And then these, this is a legend down here of what each of the parameters are that are displayed in this. In this. And you can actually select and graphically edit pipe elevations if you'd like in this, in this top area. The bottom is the actual elevations that are assigned to the HY12 model. So let's go ahead and uh, there are two buttons here. One button is you can offset the invert elevations from surface elevations. That's what I want to do. I want to offset my invert elevations from my computed surface elevations. Now all my surface elevations are all computed, so I'm going to offset those elevations using cover depth. So let's say my pipes need to be three feet below the ground. I'll hit OK here and enter three feet for the cover depth. Hit OK. And if I hit OK on this window, this diagram is still not, uh, you can't see much because I have my original crown and invert elevations here. I'm going to hit OK and then come back into that dialog. We're going to HY12 edit elevation. Then you can see the pipe network that was computed. So that's using the offset invert elevations from surface elevations. So all of my crowns are three feet below the ground for all of my pipes and, um, and my pipes in my network. One thing that I can do is you can actually zoom in and, and into an area here. So here I have this access hole. And the access hole, where this access hole goes into the downstream pipe, um, the diameter of that inlet into the pipe is not the same as the pipe. So what I want to do is change the elevation of the invert access hole invert to match the pipe invert elevation. So I'm going to copy and paste that pipe invert elevation so the access hole has the same bottom elevation as the pipe invert. And then if you right click on this plot, there are several options. One of the options is to frame the plot. I'll go ahead and frame the plot. And that puts me back to my original view. 
So this is my pipe network that I've defined. All my elevations are defined. Hit OK here. And then you can go back into the node parameters and also link parameters. You can see that all my accessible invert elevations are defined as well as the outfall invert elevation. And also all the link elevations, my upstream inverts and downstream inverts are all defined. So now that I've defined all of my node and link information, I'm very close to being able to run HY12. But before I do that, we're going to talk about running HY12. And so I'm going to describe how to run HY12 now and view the results from an HY12 model. After you've defined your project parameters, and your link and node structures and parameters, you're ready to run HY12. Run HY12 by selecting the Run HY12 command from the HY12 menu. A menu appears with options for several HY12 input files. Make sure the HY12 input and output files are saved where you want them to be saved, that you're using the correct material database file, and that you are using the correct HY12 executable. Select the material database used with this project. This file specifies settings for the project that you can customize as needed. We've already looked at this file earlier. On the first line in this window, you can edit the path, select the file, or view the currently selected file. The second line informs you whether the selected file name exists and whether it can be read or not. You should also assign the desired material database when beginning the project in the project properties. The next line is used to specify the location of the HY12 input file. This file will be saved by WMS when you click the Run Simulation button and is read by HY12. The next line is used to specify the location of the HY12 log file. This file is created by HY12 when it starts. HY12 updates the file with messages during the model run. The type of messages that HY12 reports to the log can be selected in the HY12 project settings. The next line is used to specify the location of the HY12 report file. This file provides the results of the run in a text format that can be read and understood by the user. Then the final line is used to specify the location of the HY12 report file. This file provides the results, or actually the output file. This file provides the results of the run in a text file that is read by WMS. After clicking the Run Simulation button, the WMS model wrapper runs an HY12 model, which is a DOS program. It runs the HY12 model and then displays the model output messages. When running HY12, the model wrapper messages are also being recorded in the log file. When the model completes its computations, the model wrapper will output a line that states normal exit or HY12 exited because of errors. WMS uses nodes and links to define storm drain network geometry. HY12 uses node, arc, and area structures for its computations. Node structures include access holes, inlets, and outfalls. Arcs include pipes and channels. Areas include rational basins. WMS nodes can have several HY12 nodes and or areas. For example, node 4 in the picture to the right could have an access hole, a gutter inlet, and a rational basin. WMS nodes and links are assigned names. Each node and link has an independent name. Every HY12 structure has a unique number called an ID. The HY12 reports reference the HY12 IDs, not the WMS link and node names. There is a table available that can be used to associate WMS nodes and links with HY12 IDs. 
The HY12 report provides the results of the model computations. The report can be customized in the material database. The first text block shows the version and build date of the HY12 executable. The project summary block includes the data entered, entered in the project data dialog. Project name, notes, and designer. The input file name is included. A few of the project settings are included to provide context on the results. The date and time that the report file was created are shown. The error summary block gives the number of errors, warnings, and notices, and then provides those messages. The model layout report describes how the structures are connected. It begins with the outfall and moves upstream along one branch until there is no structure upstream. It then returns to the next branch starting with the structure that is part of the last branch and follows the new branch to its end. It then follows and reports the remaining branches. The pipe geometry summary block lists all of the pipes with the following parameters, diameter, Manning's end value, length, slope, upstream and downstream invert, and cover. It gives a table for a quick check that the slopes and cover are within the appropriate range and verify verifies if they are, there are any basic input errors. The pipe flow summary block lists all of the pipes with the following parameters, flow, full flow, velocity, velocity, full velocity average. The output flow value is a steady state flow. Full flow is the amount of flow that the pipe is capable of conveying when flowing full, whether or not the full flow, flow full is reached during the simulation. Velocity normal is the velocity corresponding to flow, and the velocity full is the velocity corresponding to full flow. Velocity average is the average of the pipe inlet velocity and the pipe outlet velocity. The basin inlet summary table block lists all the rational method basins and the gutter inlets with the following parameters, type of structure, peak flow, bypass flow, spread width, and depth. Rational basins list their peak flows but have dash dash to indicate that the remaining parameters do not apply. The HGL slash EGL summary block lists all the pipes, access holes, and outfalls with the following parameters. Inlet, invert elevation, crown elevation, ground or surface elevation, HGL elevation, EGL elevation, if the pipe is surcharged, and dash dash means not applicable or for other structures, and if there is surface overflow at an access hole. The hydraulic grade line, HGL, includes water depth and pressure head. The energy grade line, or EGL, includes water depth, pressure head, and velocity head. To access the hydraulic and energy grade lines plot, you need to select the structures of interest. You may select all the structures you want plotted, or you can select the most upstream node or link, and also the most downstream node or link, and HY12 will determine the path between them. You can select multiple items by holding down the shift key. Then select HY12, UEGL, and HGL plots. The EGL and HGL profile plot provides an interface to visually quick check the results of the run, while also being able to verify the numerical results of the run. This window is accessed by selecting HY12 U, EGL, and HGL plots. You can view the HGL and the EGL plotted with the model geometry in WMS. The data is plotted above and reported below in a table. I will now demonstrate how to run a completed HY12 model and view the report and some of the results from the model simulation. So we'll go back here to WMS, where we have a completed HY12 model. To run HY12, you select HY12 menu at the top, and then select Run HY12. I can go down this list, make sure all of my parameters, input and output files are correct. I'm going to select a different location for my input file. We're going to go to my HY12 directory where I want to save this file. 
there's my log file that's saved and my output file I'm going to also change that to the correct directory And then we'll run the simulation. So HY12 runs to completion. It says normal exit down here at the bottom. And you'll see some warnings, some notices. And then it'll prompt me to bring up the HY12 output file. So here is the output file that HY12 creates. I can scroll through this output file, look at all of the input and output parameters. Here's my model layout, report my pipe geometry summary, pipe flow summary, my summary table, and all the output from HY12 is listed in this file. For now, I'm going to just minimize this window. I'm going to come back to that later. And we're going to close the, the run simulation window. Now, if I want to view the EGL and HGL plots, I can select the most upstream node and the most downstream node, or I can just select all of the nodes in my simulation and then select HY12, View EGL and HGL Plots. And this window will show a plot of my storm drain schematic, a profile view, as well as the EGL, which is displayed using the red, and HGL lines, which, are, which is displayed using the green line. And the legend, here's the legend down here, my surface elevations, my pipes, and all the information in my storm drain network. Down below, I have a listing of all of my EGL and HGL values in a spreadsheet format at each link and node. The other thing, if you want more detail, you can turn on this option to view the HY12 structure IDs. This lists all of my structures that I've defined in my H for 12 model. So my rational met method basin structures, my access holes, my outfalls, and all my pipes. And the nodes or links that those structures are associated with, as well as the HY12 ID. Now if I go back here to the HY12 output file, Each structure in this file has an ID associated with it. This ID is the HY12 ID that's listed in this window, in this HY12 ID lookup window. So for example, here's a pipe with ID 9. If I go down here to HY12 ID 9, that's the pipe that's associated with link 3. So I go, can go to my WMS model. Link 3 is my most downstream pipe in my model. If I wanted, I can look at all of the input and the output parameters, including the velocity area, and all that, all those parameters associated with this pipe. There are other options that we won't. Uh, they're mainly associated with unsteady models. And so if you're going to run an unsteady model, you can look at some hydrographs, things like that at different nodes. Since this is a steady state model, we're not going to get into that. So now I'm going to review what we've discussed in this video, what I've discussed in this video. The objectives, objectives of this video were first to provide an introduction to HY12 and to WMS and show how to learn more about HY12. Second, I wanted to describe and demonstrate how to define, run, and view the output from an HY12 model using the WMS interface. And finally, I wanted to 
help you understand the input parameters required to define an HY12 model. The steps required to define, run, and visualize the output of an HY12 model using WMS were first, to define your model layout. This includes defining inlet and access hole locations, pipe locations, and other storm drain layout information necessary to define your HY12 model. This information is defined in its storm drain coverage. Second, define your project settings, which are parameters that are used everywhere in your HY12 model. Third, define node information. Node information includes inlet and access hole information, rational method in parameters, and outfall parameters. Fourth, define link data, including the geometry and associated information for each pipe or channel. Automated tools exist that can be used to define elevations in your HY12 model. After defining your link and no data, run HY12 and view the results from running HY12, including the detailed text file output, the hydraulic grade line, and the elevations in the storm drain network.